Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're coming to you with another Power Stroke video. Now, this video is to help you not misdiagnose a common problem in the Power Stroke. Now, this applies to a 7.3 and a 6 liter. Now, the only way it, that it doesn't apply to a 7.3 is the earlier 7.3s, they have a mechanical fuel pump in the valley that rides off of the cam. And then in the later model, they use a, a inline fuel pump. It's about this long. And it's got, it, if you're looking at the frame rail, driver's side is that way. The back of the car is here. You have a single line in and a single line out. And then you'll have two little eyelets that will come down and attach. You'll have a pink wire. It'll be uh, to positive and a black wire to negative. Now, if you've got a six liter, so sometimes, According to the diagrams, this isn't the one that I had, but according to the diagrams, this is the 7.3 right here, right there. That's the 7.3, and that's the 6 liter, all right? The 6 liter, now the 6 liter is different. The, fuel, the 6 liter has a fuel conditioning module, which is about this long and about that tall, and it's got this, the, one of the fuel filters is in the back of the, the fuel pump module. And in the bottom, you'll have a two pin connector. And that two pin connector will have a pink and black wire, which is your fuel pumps relay switched power. And the black wire will be ground. Now, let's get into the premise for this video. Now, it's common for the fuel pumps to fail because I've replaced many fuel pumps in 7.3s and I've replaced quite a few in the six liters. And generally it's because of this code. This is the first time I've ever come across this, uh, this problem, but it's very common. So you'll get a six liter or a seven three and they'll, it'll be a no start. Uh, they'll complain this one here. They, can, they said that they'll be driving on the road and it would just start to lose power and it cut off. And if they waited about 10 minutes, it would restart. So I checked it out, nothing was showing bad, and, but the fuel pump had excessive current draw. So I replaced the fuel pump and uh, also, oh, 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 the code is a P0231 and it will say fuel pump secondary circuit low. In my case, I had a low high pressure oil code and the secondary fuel pump code. I found the ICP sensor was leaking uh, and, it, and it's very common for the high pressure pump to go bad as well um, and cause that code. So we put an IPR and an ICP sensor and a pigtail in it to make sure that the high pressure oil wasn't the issue. Uh, and then um, the secondary fuel pump was drawing too much amperage, so we replaced the fuel pump. And then I went out on a drive, and I remember I said, when I first got this thing, it wasn't acting up. It wasn't setting a code, there was nothing wrong. It just had high amp draw on, on the fuel pump, so I suspected when it got hot that it was failing. Okay, so I get done with this thing and I go to drive it and I took a short drive and it stalled on me. It took me about four different starts to get it back to the shop. I get it back to the shop and then now it's setting a code all the time. So basically what, I, what I'm gathering on this one was that the, the fuel pump was drawing too much amperage and maybe because it was worn out, maybe because of the problem with, uh, with what I'm gonna talk about, but either way I knew I had a good fuel pump now. So then when I went to test it, it went into just a completely, the fuel pump was just dead. It would start, run like crap. I'd barely get it out of the shop to move it. And uh, so, sure enough, got my power probe, pulled back the boots, checked the power. I had no power to the fuel pump. All right, now this, a six liter and a seven three operate in the same way. It's just a different fuel pump. So, what you're gonna do, if you have this code, first of all, before you replace the fuel pump, try to get it to act up. Then you want to go in here and you want to check your pink and black wire. If it's a six liter, back probe the pink and black wire there. Don't disconnect the connector. A lot of times when you disconnect connectors of electrical components, you're not going to get the proper signals that you think you should see. Or when there's no load, uh, you're just not going to get the right, the right testing uh, results. So it's best to back probe the wires. I know a lot of younger guys will just disconnect the connector and check it and be like, yep, it's got power. But as soon as you plug it in, the load brings it down, doesn't have enough power, so therefore you're chasing your tail. So back probe it. 
Uh, if you have the 7.3, if you have this connector, that's fine. Back probe the pink and black wire. If not, just go straight to the pink terminal, the, the positive terminal on the fuel pump. And if you don't have power, let's move on. Okay, so now we're looking at the fuel pump relay. That is the most common cause of this code in these trucks. Very, very common, as well as the fuel pump. So, easy troubleshooting for this relay. So let me show you where this relay lives. It lives inside of this fuse box in the truck. This is inside of the cab. When you pull off the lower dash panel, here's your fuse box cover, all right? So the first thing you're gonna do when you go to test this is you're gonna take your fuse box and it's gonna look like this, gonna sit in the dash like that, all right? You're gonna grab this side, pop that off, all right? Now you're looking for fuse 40, which is a 20 amp fuse. And it is the ninth one over from the bottom. Now, good old Ford does not tell you what the fuses are for. They only tell you the fuse number. So if you don't have access to a wiring diagram, or, or maybe if you can't find it on Google, <coughs> you're not gonna know what fuse is for the fuel pump relay. It is the ninth one over from the right side. You're gonna come over here, there's all these 20 amp fuses, a couple of 15s, and then the 20 amp. This is your 20 amp fuse for the fuel pump relay. Now, unfortunately, the fuel pump relay is inside this fuse box and it is not serviceable. And the funny thing is, this will tell you how common this is. Ford has these in stock by the boxes. So we ordered one and had it here on the next Ford run. So you're gonna check this fuse right here and make sure you have power. As long as you have power on this fuse. Next thing you're gonna do, pretty simple. So the the PCM relay, I drew this because I couldn't print a wiring diagram without printing like a million pages. So here is the relay, all right? So this is from the PCM relay. This is from the power relay, okay? The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to this dark green and yellow wire. Now it's really hard to get to the connectors on the back of this, field, uh, this fuse box, but you can do it two ways. One, you can back probe the connector in this dark green and yellow wire and make sure that you have power, okay? If you don't have power, which you shouldn't because that goes straight to the inertia switch and then straight to the fuel pump. What I did on mine because it was hard to get to, I just went straight to the inertia switch. Under the passenger kick panel, pull one cover off, wire right there, back probe it, turn the key on, no power, okay, cool. Then I know that I don't have, most likely I don't have a wiring problem between here and the inertia switch, okay? But you could. So, I mean, really, I mean, to be 100% positive, you wanna back probe this connector. But go over here to the inertia switch, easiest check and make sure, because if you have power there, well then you have a different problem. But you won't have power there most likely, all right? The next thing you're gonna do is verify that you really do have, not have power coming out of the back of the fuse box to this wire here, which feeds the inertia switch. As long as you don't have power, then you're gonna to go to this wire here. So what I ended up doing was I had to disconnect the connector and pull the wiring down so I could find the wire. And I just used a bed of nails and I just pinched into the wire, plugged the connector back in and turned the key on. Now what you're looking for on this wire is you're looking for ground. You're looking for the PCM to be grounding this relay. Here's the power coming from the power relay. This is the computer grounding it to pull the relay closed to allow power to go to the fuel pump. So as long as you have ground on this wire, then you know you have power, you have no power coming out of the relay, you have power from the PCM relay, which you can't test that, and you have ground from the PCM. So you know that everything about this relay is, is working except for the switch. And that is because uh, this, this fuel pump relay has failed. So it has the power in the ground, it's just not pulling it over. So therefore you have no power transferring through and going to your fuel pump. So as long as you ha don't have power here and you have ground here and your fuse is good, then you're gonna be replacing this fuse box assembly. It's not hard to replace this guy. Uh, I was a little overwhelmed when I first looked at it because I wasn't sure. Uh, but on the, so you're gonna have, one wire is gonna go through the firewall and it's gonna go up above the, almost like above the, the driver's uh, front wheel well. 
and there's gonna be a little plastic cover. You're gonna pop that off. It's gonna we'll disconnect your batteries because it's a hot wire. You're gonna disconnect your batteries, pop that little cover off, take the 10 millimeter nut off. Most of the time, there's two eyelets, one coming from the front and one coming from the back. Well, usually the one in the front will be on top. So you have to lift that up and then lift this one out, push it back through the firewall. Um, and then from here, you're going, what I did was I disconnected all of the screws first. So you're gonna have two up top right here and you're gonna have two on the bottom here. Now these move to allow it, these are already attached to the fuse box. The new one has these on there. You're gonna undo these four, I think they were 10 millimeters. And then that way you can maneuver the box. You're gonna maneuver the box and you're gonna pull it out from the right side like this, okay? So this is what you're gonna see like this and you're gonna just start disconnecting connectors as you go across. So make sure that you grab the connector and not the wires. There's a bunch of wires in all of these, all these connectors. Um, and I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% positive, but I think that this is the connector that you're gonna be testing. Um, it's either this one, I'm pretty sure it's this one. But anyways, uh, so you're gonna disconnect all these connectors and then you're just gonna pull this out. And then this is gonna just feed on out through and then you're gonna slip the new one in to speed this through, get this in place and start in reverse. Start connecting connectors, making your way over and then loosely get all your bolts in. Make sure you feed this through your firewall and get this, this uh, grommet right here seated in the firewall. Connect this to the, to the post Put the front lead back on, tighten the nut, make sure it's tight, put your cover on, tighten your batteries, and then turn your key on. And I mean, really, when you do that, you should hear the fuel pump running. So you can go down there, and I just took a power probe, went down there real quick, made sure I had power. Good, started it up, it ran strong. I could tell it had fuel, and everything was good. So, that is how you diagnose and repair a PO231 on a seven on a late 73 and an early and a, and a 680. So make sure you check this. If you get this code, do not replace the fuel pump until you're sure that you can't duplicate the problem. Uh, I've, I've, I've replaced lots of fuel pumps just for these just for this code. Uh, I have only replaced one fuse box. But after doing a lot of research, I found out it's very, very common. So I hope you enjoyed this video hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the bell you get notified of all my future content. Also check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for my daily life as a mechanic. Uh, check out my merchandise shop. Uh, there's a link in the about page. You can get a t-shirt, get a coffee cup, you can drink a little cup of coffee while you wear your shirt, and support your local Nuts and Bolts with Tone. So thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.